All right, we've got Coach Candrea here. And um, we'll start it off with uh, Troy, go ahead. So Coach, so far you guys are two and one on the road trip. What are your initial takeaways uh, midway through this trip? Well, I think, um, you know, it was a, it, it's been a really good test for us um, having to deal with some adversity. Um, but um, I, I think overall, the kids played very well at South Florida, and we stumbled a little bit at uh, Central Florida. We just um, just got beat, couldn't get our bats going, and um, it was a long day for us um, with a COVID test at 10 o'clock in the morning and nowhere to go because um, we were on the bus. We traveled from Tampa. Um, so we were a little bit flat, but, um, you know, we had a day's rest yesterday and we're looking forward to the rest of the weekend. And then during that central, uh, Southern Florida, uh, two game series, Allie hit her first career home run. Seems like she's, uh, getting out there defensively and doing a good job. Uh, what are some takeaways you've seen in her game? Well, you know, Allie works really hard and, and, um, the, the thing that I've been really impressed with is just her ability to keep the game slow. You know, she's, she's played with, um, some confidence and um, some savvy and, and had some really good at bats. And, you know, um, I, I really feel comfortable right now with her. She's, um, you know, she's doing what we need right now at this moment. And um, she's a good player. Sean, you're next. Thanks for being here, coach. Yeah. So uh, today's game uh, later will be against Florida A&M and, and Arizona's never played Florida A&M in a game ever um, for softball. So I'm wondering, as a coach, is there anything that you do differently in your approach towards teams that not only, like, the school has never faced this year, but has never faced ever in a match? Well, I think the first thing is we uh, got up after breakfast this morning, went over to the field, and, and got familiar with the surroundings. Um, it's an all-turf field, which is completely different than we've ever played on. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we got a chance to get our bearings and give our pitchers a chance to throw off the mound since it is all turf. Um, but, you know, truthfully, it's, um, it's us just um, understanding our identity and, and um, making sure that we, we prepare properly. I think at the end of the day, you know, it's a, it's a very process-oriented sport, and uh, the one thing you have control over is how you prepare. And so... Um, I really believe no matter who we're playing, um, the, the, the pregame um, routine is, uh, should look similar. And um, then it's just a matter of going out. And, and it's a game of, ex of adjustments. You know, us Central Florida game, we just we, we were too slow at making adjustments and um, just never really got it going. But um, truthfully, at the end of the day, that's, that's going to be the true test, you know, down the road. Um, from here on out, playing good teams with good pitching, um, you, you have to be able to make adjustments. But I think at the very beginning of the game, you have to really go out and, and be ready to throw punches. You know, you can't wait for the first time around to feel someone out. I think you have to be ready uh, when the bell rings. And I, I just thought we, we were kind of sitting back waiting for them to do something. And then they did something. And, you know, we just couldn't, couldn't get the key base hit. Uh, um, you know, hit into a double play when we didn't, you know, didn't want to do that and just things like that. I mean, just um, the stars were not lined up right. So, um, but today, you know, we play a team that we were not familiar with, but um, I think right now I'm more concerned about Arizona and, and how we're playing. And so that's what we're going to do. So to speak to that with your, your team, after Florida a and you'll go and play Florida State, again, one of the toughest teams in the nation. So as what is it that you'll tell your team to hopefully, in essence, rebound from a loss against the first top-ranked opponent you played for then now playing Florida State? Well, the first thing, as I, I, I said, is that, you know, we're not going to win every ball game, And so uh, one of the things you have to learn to handle as an athlete is, is – the days that you fail and, and the key is to be able to rebound. And, and I think in order to rebound, you, you just kind of reset yourself. You, 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 you make sure that you're taking care of the details. You're, you're doing the little things to make sure that your process is in order um, because you can't really control everything else. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things in this game that we can't control. Uh, the pitcher can't control the hitter. You know, sometimes the hitter can't control the pitcher. You can't control what your defense is going to do. 
And so at the end of the day, it's just being able to go back to something that anchors you each and every day to go out and perform your very best to play the game one pitch at a time. And then last question for you, Coach. So it was recently announced that fans uh, in a limited amount will be allowed back to uh, the softball and baseball game. So I'm wondering, as a coach, what does that mean for you? And then what do you feel it means for your players to finally have fans that can come back and sort of, you know, boost the team up or whatever it is that you feel? Will yeah, help? No, we're, you know, we've been waiting a year for this. So it's a very exciting moment for us to be able to bring our fans back. I think our fans is what uh, makes Arizona softball what it is. Um, it's a great environment to play in. And, and when you don't have those fans, the environment is different. And I commend our team for dealing with everything that they've had to deal with uh, during this pandemic to get to this point. And so I know they're very excited. And I know I'm very excited to have our fans back in the seats and, and be able to support this team. Ryan, you're next. Uh, Dejo was saying that uh, Ali is very coachable. What have you seen in that regard? Oh, that, that, that's, that's an understatement. I mean, she's, she's a sponge. Uh, she absorbs everything. Um, she's a very intelligent kid. And um, normally when you have someone that excels in the classroom, um, one of the areas that they're really good at is um, being coachable and being able to disseminate information and be able to pick the information that works for you and helps you. And I think Allie is all ears. I mean, I think that's one of the Neatest things about this year was our freshmen could have sat back and said, oh, God, the seniors are back. You know, we're not going to be able to get a chance to play. But this freshman class was very excited to play with this senior class. And so I've really encouraged them to to um, take the moment and and learn as much as you can from these athletes, because the one thing we can't teach is experience. And um, the one thing that the senior class has is experience and so when you come in as a freshman, um, you would be crazy not to get in the back pocket of some of these players that have played the game for a long time. And how important is it for someone like Ali to be able to get these at bats this season and kind of build that database like you're always talking about? I, it, it's it's huge, you know, and, and I, I think one of the things about our game is, you know, you the, the key is to be ready when your opportunity comes. And um, so a lot of that is a compliment to her day-to-day um, process that she goes through. I mean, she's a very hard worker. She, she works, um, she has worked every day like she is a starter. And therefore she was prepared when the time came that we needed her and um, she stepped in and, and has really been good, you know? And so um, this is just, it's, it's, it's an opportunity and it's experience that you, you know, you can't do it. You can't get it in practice. So I'm, I'm very pleased and I'm very pleased the way she's handled it. And in terms of her skill set, what do you like about her? Well, I think um, she's improved. Um, you know, I think her arm strength was um, adequate, but um, I think she's kind of found an arm slot that helps her um, be able to, to throw the ball with some authority. Um, the thing that I've always been impressed with is her ability to, um, to swing the bat. She's got, she's got deceivingly good power and, um, and she's shown that, you know, so the, the key for her is to get those at bats and to be able to, to let the ball travel and, and come to her instead of being out in front of everything and rolling it over. And I think the more at bats she's gotten, the better she's became at making the, those adjustments from one at bat to the next. And you also have uh, Hannah Bowen at second, and that, that's another good option. And how do you kind of pick who you're going to play on a given day? Is it just based on who's been swinging the bat better? Yeah, I think that's primarily it. Um, you know, there's there's two folds of that is the offensive side and the defensive side. I don't think you can give away defense at second base because I think that's the toughest position in softball to play. Um, there's a lot of responsibilities. So, you know, if, if, I'm, if I have my – golden day, it would be someone that, like Arena that, that has the offense and has the defense. Um, if you don't have that luxury, then you're going to probably, I'm going to prioritize defense over the offensive side. Um, but I really believe with both of those young ladies, um, they give us a little bit of both. So uh, we're very blessed to have them. And, and what is it like to, to watch Ali and, and Carly kind of operate on that side now? And I know Ali was kind of saying, well, she looks at it as, uh, as kind of like the future. That's She sees that as like the future of the program. Well, I'm glad she's looking at it that way. And it, it, it is, you know, I think um, 
Um, Carly has stepped in and, and really been um, solid as a rock. Um, again, I think the key uh, with freshmen is are they able to slow the game down? I mean, can they can they keep their motor where it needs to be to be able to play at this level? And I think both of those young ladies have shown that they can do that. And therefore, they're they're playing the game with confidence. Um, you know, they're playing the game with maturity. And um, that's uh, a very nice thing to see out of a freshman. John? Yeah, Coach, uh, first, you know, you talked about in this, uh, in the preview or the first interview about this road trip, about how the Florida State series was kind of the first part of this that you've set up. What do you think you can get from uh, playing Florida State three times in their place? You know, there was a lot of talk about preparing for the World Series, even, uh, you know, it's so early in this season. What, what is, what do you think you can get from this series? Well, we get a lot out of it. You know, I think um, one of the things I've found is you, you got to play the best to be the best. So um, it was an opportunity for us to play a quality opponent on the road, um, which, you know, if you're going to, to win a Pac-12 title or anything else, you're going to have to do it on the road. And so it, it was really a good opportunity to put our kids in an uncomfortable situation and see how they react and learn from it. And so um, Florida State's a, a formidable opponent. They're, they're a very good ball club, and we're going to have to play um, as well as we're going to have to play from here on out when we walk into Seattle or walk into, you know, L.A. or anywhere else. And so to me, it's, it's just a really good test. I mean, we could – you know, we could schedule where we walk into conference play and we're undefeated, but it, it doesn't help you. You know, you, you've got to really realize what it's going to take to, to play a quality opponent and um, see quality pitching. And I think this was a good opportunity for us. And then you guys have traveled uh, quite a bit on this road trip. This is kind of unusual for a softball team to have to go through this. So, you know, how has your team handled that and how have uh, you guys not let it affect your play? Yeah, I think they've handled it quite well. You know, I think it, uh, we knew, um, you know, originally it was coming in here and playing Florida State in a three game series. And then when COVID hit and we were looking for games and some tournaments canceled, um, I, I just, and this usually isn't me. I mean, I'm, I'm the last guy that wants to be on the road for 10 days because I've, I've done it lots of my life. Um, but it just happened that um, it was a good time for us to be able to pick up some games here in Florida. Um, Florida was a pretty open state and um, that had a little bit something to do with it back then. And um, it gave us a chance to play some quality opponents in good weather, um, which is the other thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a challenge. And I think these kids have handled it quite well. It's, um, I really believe that uh, Monday was probably our, our biggest challenge travel wise um, because we, you know, we, we had to check out of the hotel early in the morning. We had to get a COVID test at 10 o'clock. And so that caused us to have to sit around and in, in the bus and, and on their campus to, to wait for the game. And, and so that it wasn't the ultimate and probably the, the purest preparation that I would like before a game, but it was a challenge. And um, you're not always going to have it um, exactly the way you want it. And so I thought it was a good test for us. And we didn't do quite well in that test. But, you know, that's what this, this whole season's all about. You know, every weekend to me is a test. And um, sometimes you have to deal with adversity to be able to be successful um, passing the test. Yeah, and my final question is, um, you know, I've had coaches tell me that they learn how good of a recruiter they are when they go on long road trips because they find out what kind of character the girls are that they're bringing to the program and, and how they can get along with others. Um, you know, how have you seen that? And, and, and is that something that you, uh, you know, you've seen it, it's a big, big part of the program? Yeah, there, I mean, that, that is exactly right. I think there's a, a lot of things you can learn from being on the road and you know, especially this year with COVID, we, we have not really had the opportunity to spend a lot of time together. You know, our, our locker room has been closed. Um, the Lappin Center has been closed. And so we pretty much show up for practice and then everyone goes back to their apartments. And, and this was the first time that we've been able to spend some time together. And 
And it was, it's been nice to see the kids sitting around and whether it's at breakfast or at lunch, um, you know, visiting and, and laughing and having a good time. And, and I, I do think it definitely shows the character of your team. And, and you know, I've said all along, I, I love the character of this ball club because I think we have great leadership uh, with our senior class. And I think we have some really quality kids um, that are not just great athletes, but great people. And, and yeah, it is a mark on your recruiting, you know, for sure. Because if you have a bad apple, then it usually will um, rise to the top when you're out on the road and, and you're under some stress and adversity. And this group is, is they're just a lot of fun to be around. And we've got time for one more. Ryan, you'll close us out. Um, what is your impression of Florida State? What do you think of them as a team? Um, very solid team, very well coached, um, good pitching, um, good athletes, um, good speed. Um, you know, that they, they check all the boxes. And, um, you know, they're a team that, um, that can beat anyone in the country and, and um, can be beat by anyone in the country, you know, just like everyone else. So, yeah, I, I think they're, they're definitely just a quality opponent. And it's just a really good opportunity for us to play them on the road um, as when they came to our place and played us at, at home. So it was basically a return trip. And, uh, oh, and uh, Denham's had a really good start to the season. What, what are the biggest differences that you've seen in her this year? Uh, I just think she's uh, comfortable, um, confident, um, keeps the game slow. I think she's got a really good process that she's into right now and, and has kind of learned how to handle all the distractions that come your way. Um, and um, therefore, I think that when she's in the circle, she's much more focused on the task at hand. And to me, that's probably the most important thing for a pitcher. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. We have freshman second baseman Ali Skaggs and senior catcher Deja Mulipola with us. When you ask your questions, please address which one. Uh, you would like to answer. Um, we'll start off with Sean. You're first up. Go ahead. So um, obviously uh, two first great games against South Florida. Uh, you outsco outscored your opponents 19 to one over the course of those two games. So I was wondering if you could just talk about what would you say led to such an offensive firepower against a great team down there with so many runs? I mean, uh, I think it's a credit to just how much depth we have in our lineup. We have power hitters. I mean, minus Janelle, but she went six for six, I think, that series. So, I mean, everybody is just doing their job and passing the bat. I think that's our motto. It's just passing the bat and trusting the person behind us. And um, it doesn't always have to be a home run to win, even though we did hit a couple of home runs that game. Um, but I think it's just a credit to how ready everybody was to play. And then... Of course, a very, very tough loss uh, against UCF, first uh, top 25 uh, ranked opponent. So after coming off such a scoring frenzy, you would say, against South Florida, what would you say would you feel was what may have slowed your offense down a bit in terms of the pitching on the other side? Or was it you know, just the fast turnover of going to another city so quickly? What do you feel? Um, definitely a fast turnover going to another city. We had actually driven an hour and a half, got COVID tested that morning and then kind of sat around. Um, that isn't much of an excuse. We should have still been able to produce, but I mean, it is still hard being on the road um, and traveling and busing and being prepared and being in that mindset to be able to um, produce runs. But it definitely is difficult. Being on the road is difficult. Being at anybody's home is difficult, but um, it definitely was a challenge and they were a ranked team and, and they were really competitive and they came out and they produced. And then uh, just a uh, last question for you, Deja. So we know I, I asked the coach about this last week about, um, of course, in uh, Florida, it's uh, very humid at times, so that could have a change um, on the ball. So now that uh, you ladies have played a few games in Florida, is humidity, do you feel, is it having a factor down there? And if so, what is it you've seen in these past three games that maybe you could make adjustments with in terms of pitching going forward into uh, Florida A&M and then Florida State as well? 
Uh, personally, I don't feel that the humidity is as bad. I mean, obviously we feel it because we're Tucson heat people. Um, we're used to that Tucson heat, but um, the humidity actually isn't that bad right now. Um, moving forward, I think as long as our pitchers trust their stuff and throw their pitches, um, we'll be fine moving forward. Great. And then, uh, Allie, if I may ask you a question. So um, I've seen that Arizona has never played Florida a and so there's no history between the, the two schools as of now. So is there anything that you ladies do differently as a team in terms of when you face an opponent that you've never faced before, and especially since you're here on the road against them in their stadium? I really don't think so. Um, I think our preparedness has to be the same either way, whoever you're playing. Um, even if it's Florida A&M, we saw that with UCF, um, you have to be ready to play whoever you're playing. So um, I think whoever it is that you're showing up, the preparedness and just getting there, um, you shouldn't overlook anyone like we saw. So um, I don't think that anything should change and that we should come in like we're playing the number one team every single time we come to play. And then uh, last question for you, Ali. So after Florida A&M, you'll be playing one of the best teams once again in the country in Florida State. So what would you say you could take from the UCF game, which was another top 25 game, and take from that loss and use it to prepare for another great team in Florida State? Now you'll be playing, instead of just one game, three games against them. I just say to bring our own energy to start. Um, I think we kind of, we weren't really expecting them to come out as um, rowdy and ready for us, I think at UCF. Um, so I think especially coming into a team that's that's higher ranked with Florida State and playing them multiple times, we're gonna need to come ready for the first pitch, even in warmups, we're gonna need to come ready for stretching and everything like that. So um, I, think, I think our team definitely had a little bit of a switch after that UCF game. And I think we're definitely ready to compete and bring the energy that we want to bring and not not sit back and wait to bring it thank you ladies for your time troy go ahead so uh deja during that uh southern florida game you got the opportunity to play against uh the team usa coach ken erickson what was that experience like knowing that you know he's one of your coaches and you get to i know you played against coach Condrea. was that a little weird playing against him or business as usual um, I think it was just business as usual. I mean, it's cool to have him in the other dugout. He came over and he chatted to me a couple of times, uh, just kind of giving me pointers here and there. But I mean, it was no different than just having a regular coach on my team. Um, it was just cool to have him in the other dugout. And then you've started off the season pretty hot. Uh, six home runs, I believe, and 22 RBIs. It seems like you're a little bit stronger at the plate from the last time we saw you in 2019. Uh, do you credit not only your work ethic, but being able to be a part of Team USA for that? I'm sorry, what was the question? So it seems like you're a little bit stronger at the plate. You're driving the ball a little bit harder, and you've always been a power header. But do you credit that extra strength to Team USA and just your work ethic this offseason? Um, I think I credit it more my maturity to Team USA just because I take my at-bats a little bit more um, mature in that aspect where I'm having intentional breaths up to, up to bat. I'm looking – a little bit more selective at certain pitches and understanding what my role is, especially being in the number four spot um, with base runners on. So I think it's just more slowing my at-bats down, looking for a pitch to hit, looking for a pitch to drive. And then Allie, um, you hit your first career home run against Central uh, Southern Florida, excuse me. Uh, that was a three run blast. What, what was that at-bat like? Can you take me through that experience? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing is, is that I'm just getting more comfortable. Um, the, the more at bats that you see, the more pitching you see, you just start to feel so much better at the plate. So I finally, um, against South Florida, I finally felt to my normal self. Like I finally like eased in. I didn't have as much, um, as many nerves as I did my first few at bats. Um, but just that pitching, I was kind of just zoned in and I saw the rest of the team producing around me. And so I was like, okay, everyone else is doing their job. Like i and they believe in me, and I feel that a lot with this team. They really, they really do put us on their backs, and um, you could just feel the love from all of them. And I thought that was awesome. Uh, when I hit it, oh my gosh, that was coming back into the dugout was probably the greatest feeling. Um, everyone just giving hugs and high fives and everything. So, yeah, it. I mean, it just felt great. I'm feeling comfortable, and it just fitting in with this team is just huge. 
And then Coach Kendrea mentioned uh, when Raina went down and you and Bowen had to step into the lineup that, you know, it's going to be by committee and that offensively he, he was fine with you at the plate, but defensively you needed some work. How do you feel you've come along defensively since then? Yeah, I just remember ever since I've been recruited by him, it's always been my arm strength. Um, when I was younger, I didn't have the strongest arm and I was playing shortstop quite a bit. So um, that that was part of it. And I think just growing, finally growing into my body a little bit, um, I've gotten a lot stronger and just matching the speed of play when you get on campus, you're practicing every day and the reps are super fast. Like you almost have to grow very quickly. Um, and I think just even playing behind Raina for the, the fall and the spring until she went down, um, you just realize how much better you have to get. Um, and I think that um, it's just been great to, to get stronger myself in the weight room and to find some new little, um, finding my own little techniques and stuff that work on defense and just getting a little bit quicker to where I fit in pretty well out there. And has Raina given you any advice uh, when you're out there defensively when you come in in between innings? Yeah, she's, um, no, I can't think of anything specifically, but she's, I can just tell she's looking out for me. Um, after all my plays, she's the first one to give me a high five and say, nice job, like way to do that, way to work. Or if I'm out of place on something, I come back in and she's saying, oh, hey, look out there, next time if this happens again, you're going to need to be here rather than there. Um, just little things like that. Um, notes from her are extremely helpful. She's been there for so long. She knows exactly what she's doing, so um, yeah, she's been one of my biggest helpers coming into this game. All right, Kim, go ahead. Um, Ellie, I know when I talked to you and your mom right after you signed, this was kind of, you know, a big dream for, for the whole family. When you got that opportunity to step in, what was the feeling like? And what'd you say with you and your mom? Oh, gosh, I remember that phone call after practice. And I, I just told them, I said, mom, dad, uh, Raina went down today. And my parents were just like, initially, of course, it's like, it's horrible. Like you, you hate to see that. You don't want her to have to go through that her last year. And then I'm, I guarantee you, my mom probably shed some tears. Um, <laughs> she, was probably, she, I mean, I know that they've just been waiting so long to see me even in the uniform. Um, the first few games, they were so excited to even just to see that out and warming up in the outfield. They were so excited. Um, and now that I'm actually playing and getting these at bats and getting comfortable, they're just, I call them every day. They're so excited. Um, they're just, they're super proud to see me playing at their um, alumni school. And they're just, they're, they're super, super proud. And um, them getting to come back to the stadium, I bet that meant a lot to all of you. I mean, how, how's that to finally think about fans being in the stands, including your parents, but also getting to experience Tucson supporting you? Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. I think um, we, the freshman class doesn't really know yet the full experience just because the stadium, we've never played in a full stadium before, but um, I honestly think that helped a little bit with nerves, getting our first few games out of the way with only a few people in the stands, um, knocking that out. And now that they're allowing more, I'm, I'm super excited to feel that just the energy when I would come to watch and the stands were full. Oh my gosh, it's, it's incredible. So um I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. They're just going to do it in waves, I believe, and slowly get back to full capacity. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. All right. Ryan is next. Uh, this is for Allie. So uh, what was your reaction when Raya went down then? Because then obviously you go from, uh, you know, being a backup to all of a sudden you're going to be someone that's going to have to fill in in a, in a, in a spot like that. Yeah, I, I remember that the practice we were at and we were in our stretching lines and I kind of looked out and just Reyna wasn't out there. And so I was like, whoa, OK, what's going on? Um, this isn't normal. And then uh, just we started hearing that she might have gotten hit. She might have something. I don't know. Um, something went down. And um, then so I looked out at Elena and Bowen. So I was like, all right, it's just going to be us taking ground balls today. That's OK. And so um, and then it kind of developed into you know, she's going to be out for an extended period of time. And um, I just know that that Bo and I were super ready. Um, off the bat, she's had the history of being injured. So I, I never like took it out of mind. Um, I said, I, I figured that I would definitely have to be ready if anything were to happen. And now that um, unfortunately it did, uh, I'm just glad that I was mentally prepared and that I'm finally like feeling comfortable and filling in the spot and, and doing everything that I can to help the team. 
Um, and you say you were mentally prepared. Is that uh, going into your first game, you, you felt like you were prepared or now that you've had some starts, you feel prepared? I definitely did the first game. I think um, being prepared skill wise, I was definitely ready. It was just different playing wise. I think I just playing for your college team. Finally, you've been waiting so long to do that. My nerves were definitely up. Um, but even after an inning or two um, against that first game that I played, I felt so much, so much better. I look to my right. I see Jesse Harper playing shortstop. And then you're just like, OK, I'm good. It's just softball. Um, so now that I've got a couple games under my belt, a um, couple at bats, I'm I'm just feeling like, OK, we're just back to softball. I'm just playing with my teammates and they have my back. I have theirs. And it's it's just a good time. And is it kind of, I mean, had the seniors not been able to return this season, I mean, this might've been your role anyway. So have you thought about that at all? Like, oh, this is kind of where I expected to be anyway. Yeah, definitely. Um, I still kind of did that. I looked at that in the fall when we would do, we did a couple of inner squad scrimmages with the, the youngins versus the old, the older kids. And uh, looking out there at short with Sophia Carroll and Eris Carroll at uh, third base and scoop at first, you're just kind of looking like, wow, this is the future of Arizona softball. It's pretty incredible to look at. Um, I just, I still, I can't believe it that I'm out there with Deja and Jesse and Mariah pitching, Denim pitching. It's incredible um, that I've been watching these girls for so long and that you finally get to, you get to play with them and you didn't expect to at all. And so it's honestly incredible, um, but I am, I am excited for the future. I think um, our class, especially playing behind these older girls, uh, we'll be ready definitely to come in whenever we need to. And um you were asked earlier about things you've learned from Raina, but just in general from the senior class, you know, what kind of things have you taken away from them? I think to play with heart. Um, they're an extremely talented group that has been together for so long. And you can honestly just tell by the way that they interact with each other, how comfortable they are and how no matter what goes on outside of the field or outside of practice, like, you know, that when we get here, it's a family. Um, and I think it's, uh, they've taught me just quite a bit about how to um, defend each other and how to be excited for each other when things go really well. And just being a great teammate is just really important from them. Um, and then softball wise, I think just being ready to roll and getting used to the speed of the game um, in college, it, it speeds up. Everyone's fast. Everyone can pitch. Um, things change like that. But I think once you play behind them and with them for so long, you just your game gets so much better as well. And uh, you, uh, you're hitting at the bottom, like near the bottom of the lineup. How comfortable are you at, um, at that? And what's kind of your approach? Because obviously when you're at the bottom of the lineup, one of the biggest things is just to get on base to turn the lineup over. So what's kind of been your, your approach with that? Yeah, um, all the teams that I've previously been on, I've usually been closer to the top. So it's definitely a little bit different. But I mean, when you look at the lineup, you have you have power the whole way down. So it's, I'm, I'm more than fine being down there um, behind them. And I just know that I'm going to be taking good at bats, um, good swings and that I'll be ready to get on when I do. Um, I think just flipping the lineup and getting over to Janelle, if I can get on Janelle's typically going to do a very good job of either getting me over or getting on herself as well. Um, so I think just taking good at bats, swinging at good pitches, doing my best to get on, putting things in play um, is what's going to get me uh, my most hits and just my most success. And, and we haven't really seen you play. I mean, you played obviously a little bit this year, but um, what would you say your strengths are as a player? Um, I would just say my biggest strength is probably my either my energy or my communication. Um, if you've seen me play in person, I don't really shut my mouth when I'm on the field. Um, I'm always looking around everywhere. I'm talking to my, <laughs> they just laughed at me. I'm talking to my, uh, my shortstops, my outfield, everything. Like I never shut up. Um, and I think that that makes the team around me comfortable. Um, just because when I'm talking to them, I get my thumbs up from Jesse. She's like, okay, I got you here. We got you here. You just know exactly what you're getting into. Um, so that's one. And then just, I think consistency and just, you're not going to get like the flashy, plays out of me like it's 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 just very you're there it's much like Raina she's she's not the flashy player but she makes the great plays when she needs to and she just gets the job done um so I think just just being consistent and being smooth and just being comfortable that's probably my biggest strength um and my last question just for Deja so Deja do you have anything to add to Ali's skill set and also the uh, how much she talks out there <laughs> Oh, no, that is just funny because she does talk a lot. She's a very high energy kid. She's a 
a quick learner and she's just been a blast to be able to lead and she's willing to follow. So I think that's a big asset too, is just being coachable and, and being a good teammate. She's definitely that and everything that she said. All right. Thanks, Allie. Thanks, Deja.